number 11 guilt over being oh lord 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 <laughs> i forgot i wrote this guilt over being sexually active is unnecessary let's let that sink in for a minute us religious super duper christian kids Popping YouTube, it's Sydney Island here. That's Island with the Y, not an S. And today we're going to be talking about things that I learned at age 24. Because guess what, y'all? It's almost my 25th birthday on April the 30th. Taurus season, baby. And Taurus season, baby. Yay. Am I off camera a little bit? All right, yeah, that's better. And while I'm talking about this, I'm gonna be eating some vegan food that I cooked. And no, it's not a mukbang. I'm not calling it a mukbang. Like, I'm just eating. I wrote it down as little janky pieces of paper when I was working. Oh my gosh, where's the other paper? Uh-uh. Oh, hell to the naw. I found it. <laughs> so, number one. I wrote that it's, it's okay. Come on now, girl. It's okay not to tell someone every time you make a change slash decision in your life. Let's eat on that real quick. Everybody don't need to know your business. Okay? Especially when you're grown. Even when you're a teenager, but especially when you're grown, everybody don't need to know your business. You got some new ideas and some new plans. And I literally feel like I said this, this same thing on my things I learned at age 23, but I guess I relearned it again. <laughs> yeah, it'd be like that. Sometimes you learn the same lesson again, but on a deeper level, like as you get older. Sometimes I put myself in these positions where I would freak out and be super nervous because I felt like I had to tell somebody about something and I was relieved when I finally just sat there and told myself keep it to yourself you don't need to tell somebody that you are doing this to make money or that you are dating this person like a lot of times all people do is ruin stuff like I don't mean to be negative but a lot of times when you tell people your business a lot of times they put this seed in your mind that your ideas and your plans aren't good enough and you don't need that boo boo you need encouragement okay and if you're going to tell somebody about your plans in your life you should tell it to somebody that you know for a fact is going to encourage you okay let's eat on that <laughs> it's noodles and vegetables y'all with some soy sauce good too and i wrote down as like a sub point to that that dreams have a tendency to come into fruition when you keep them to yourself <laughs> don't say i didn't teach you anything don't say it. don't you dare number two it's okay to make a decision that doesn't please others especially when that decision makes you happy if it's not something where you hurting somebody you making a decision is not really gonna hurt somebody then i feel like then you should be able to make that decision like for me i was working at this job that was really making me miserable because i was always anxious about the fact that i was neglecting youtube and music which is you know things that i'm super passionate about i was like stressing y'all i was at work freaking stressing like oh my gosh youtube 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 and i felt like a prisoner y'all because like I have my son in the ninth house, which is Sagittarius house, okay? So I'm very energetic. I have a Sag house stellium on top of that. So I need, like, I just I just hate being restricted. I hate it. I hate it so much. Like, I'm just, I'm not like the average person. I can't do the average things that the average people do. Like, I can't just work at the same job, wearing the same clothes day in and day out and have the same conversations. Like, I just, I can't. I can't. And I, I can't stand restricted, small, enclosed child i didn't want to quit because i didn't want to disappoint my mom you know but it's like i did quit and i'm glad i did because if i didn't quit i wouldn't have been able to post my adele cover song and my channel would still be stagnant and i would still be wondering like am i ever gonna make it as a youtuber and of course i was wondering that because i wasn't like fueling the channel all right i'm done eating y'all where you at home girl where you at like I'm, I'm not i'm not really feeling the incognito vibes that you putting down but whatever i'm just gonna go with the flow okay number three your dreams are worth following let me let me repeat that <clears throat> gotta make eye contact your dreams <clears throat> that one right hold on your dreams are worth following
Yeah. And all of this is kind of all following in the same process with me quit my job because I realized that I was giving so much energy to these jobs instead of giving energy to my, my, you know, passions and my career and YouTube and things like that. Like I felt that it was kind of like unfair for me to give my energy to these jobs that treat me like a slave and not to my own self and, you know, trying to be a self-employed and being an entrepreneur, which won't treat me like a slave, you know? Number four, when you're feeling that you're not getting enough love, that's the perfect time to give love to yourself. Yeah, that's right. Give love to you. Yeah, when you feel like that, you feel lonely and you feel like you're just not getting that love and affection, you know what I'm saying? And ain't nobody like, yo, you sexy, you hot, you doing great things. And like, oh, I'm so proud of you. Keep on doing it, girl. Eh, like all the stuff that you want. Just say all those things to yourself. You know, when you're alone by yourself, just be like, you know what? You doing it. You doing it. You got this. You you making your own money. You know what I'm saying? You ambitious. You you get up in the morning to do your makeup, even though you feel depressed. Like, just hype yourself up. Give yourself that love that you want somebody to give to you. And if you keep doing that, eventually your self-esteem is going to improve. And so this is definitely something that I'm doing for myself. And y'all, is not easy. Like, age 24, just in general, is not an easy age. Like... It was a lot more difficult than age 23, you know, like I learned a lot of tough lessons and, you know, I dealt with this feeling, you know, just a lot of like just isolated, you know, and lonely, essentially. And so during that time, I was like, okay, well, I can't rely on other people giving me love, especially when I feel just very isolated. So I got to give that love to myself. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm already in love with myself. So in love with myself. Number five. It's very important not to put yourself in environments that make you feel physically ill, depressed, or unnecessarily anxious. Okay, that could be you, like I said before, working a job that makes you depressed. Or being in a relationship with somebody that drains your energy. And that, I, that was me, my ex-boyfriend. Like, he was nice, but he just wasn't giving me the energy that I was giving him. And so I was like, okay, deuces. And like, I talked to this girl at work. This Like, I used to work at a jewelry store. And I talked to her and she said she had this boss that was just so ill inside like just like she was such a mean-spirited person that she started to get physically sick like she had diabetes and she started to get sick because work made her so depressed that she started to get sick and i'm like that's crazy that a whole person can harbor like that much energy that they can make another person physically ill just by them not being right inside of themselves that's something that i learned and that's really crazy and i definitely don't want to be that person that's just like like something right inside that they just bring the vibration down for everybody like and I also wrote that if someone and this is a sub point to number five but if someone refuses to see the good in you cut them off back away a little bit okay number six I put a focus more on focusing more on money over your happiness is toxic but then also I have this point of like mind the business that pay you so the point that I was trying to get at is is that Sometimes we sacrifice our own um, personal time and our own space and things like that so that we can hustle for money. And then we find that we're like, you know, 58 years old, realizing that all we did our whole lives was work just for money. And then we realize, okay, so my life is almost over. Like, I only have like, you know, God knows how long because you never know when you're going to die, you know? So... So the majority of your life you just spent working for money and the crazy thing is that my friend nine pointed out to me follow him follow his youtube channel is that the people that be working hard like working these 10 hour shifts they usually be the ones that be broke it's so crazy like the ones that work the hardest they remain broke for their entire lives so it's like what is the point what is the point in you putting in all this slave labor just so you can end up broke every single week like i realized that with these retail jobs they 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 treat you like they're doing something for you but somewhere in your heart you know that they're using you because if they really was treating you well they would pay you at least 15 an hour but instead they pay you eight an hour ten an hour and they don't give you a stool to sit down in and you're just working your butt off like your whole life it never ends and people do a lot for money and then they realize that they should have been focusing more on themselves and their own internal peace rather than money because money don't really buy happiness like it can buy a feeling of stability 
and like calmness but it's just not gonna make you really happy like and if you do feel happy because of money it's gonna be temporary because you're gonna realize that it's just not fulfilling number seven shaving off all your hair is liberating no what kind of accent was that gross let's do that again i don't know what kind of accent should we do let's do british shaving off all of your hair is liberating i got more in tune with my masculine masculine did i say my mask mask i got more in tune with my masculine energy when i shaved off all of my hair i actually meant to make this number two but whatever i shaved off all of my hair yeah i, I know it doesn't look like it right here but that was uh several months ago yeah it was several months ago i shaved off all my hair i had a really big afro and i'll probably insert the picture somewhere like right here of me with a bigger afro and my afro was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I was just going through a lot and I just really needed a change. So I shaved off all my hair. Like very, it was like literally like this short, y'all. Like so I was ball I was ball headed. Okay. And I liked it. It was fun. And I found that it was more fun to like dye my hair different colors when it was that short. And it just gave me a more edgy look. And I felt like I looked like a model. Like I could have been on America's next top model. It just was a it was just a nice change. And, I, you know, I had just been holding on to my hair for so long because my mom had a thing with hair and just like bugging me about my hair because black women are just so obsessed with hair. And I was just tired of it. So I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to shave it all off because there's just this unhealthy attachment to hair in the black community, especially with black women. And I was just over it. So I shaved up all of that junk and, you know, I've never been better. But then after a while, I was just like, I miss braids. Like, I haven't had braids in so long. So I, then I just put these blue braids in, you know? It's nothing against the shortcut. Like, the hair is still pretty short under here. Like, I'm going to rock the short fro soon. Short hair is fun. And you ain't got to worry about, like, taking care of it. It's just so easy to manage. Brush it in the morning and go. Like, it's just so easy. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Doom, doom, doom. She's a machine. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh my god. <clears throat> Dancing boosts your mood. <laughs> it really does. Like, this is something that I really like come to realize. Like, I've always loved dancing. I'm black. That's just natural. Like, we just love to dance. But I had this whole new take to dancing at age 24. Like, I don't know, I just had got a little sedentary. I think quarantine just kind of me, made me feel depressed. And so I got a little bit sedentary. And then once I got up, I started dancing to some Michael Jackson. My energy just like, it just changed. And I just felt really happy. I just felt better. And apparently dancing releases something called like endorphins or something like that. That makes you happy. It releases like the happy hormone or whatever. And so, yeah, dancing definitely boosts your mood. <laughs> Get up in that, your bedroom and start dancing. Number nine. I am in no place to judge anyone. Everyone is on their own journey. I've come to realize that I can be like really judgmental. <laughs> like I'm a Taurus, okay? Like we can be really judgmental. And I've come to realize that like I judged too harshly because it's like you don't have all the answers. You're not living the perfect life. So how can you judge other people? And I honestly, you know judged my mother you know too much um when she took care of me you know she spent her whole a big bulk of her life taking care of me and my sisters and um I just kind of like just judged her for just certain things like I just kind of felt like something that I would have expected her to do or wanted her to do and I don't know I just I just realized that it was just harsh you know it was like I just kind of came at her too strong sometimes and I just realized I just not it's not I just don't want to do that like I don't want to be that person that ungrateful kid that just gives their parents hell when their parents like did nothing but care for them you know so I definitely learned that you know don't be so judgmental and number 10 kind of is similar to this it's very close to this and arguing is pointless especially with your parents um I think I was just like in the same lane of thought when I made those points is that I have started arguments with my mom because I was like judging her and it was honestly like just projection of like my own internal frustrations, frustrations about myself and my life. 
so I just kind of like took it out on her and I realized that I didn't know that that's what I was doing and I realized it and I was like yeah that's not cool you know like I don't want anybody to do that to me so just arguing is just a waste of time like especially when you get to a certain age like once you get to age 24 25 and older it's just like you need to be making your money you need to be paying your bills you really shouldn't be so worried about what everybody else is doing to a point where you're starting arguments with them you know like and i was that was me just being judgmental and it's just like girl bye <laughs> girl see you later okay hit the road jack hit the road jack don't you come back no more no more no more no more hit the road jack don't you come back no more all right number 11 guilt over being oh lord 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 <laughs> I forgot I wrote this. Guilt over being sexually active is unnecessary. Let's let that sink in for a minute. Us religious, super duper Christian kids. Yeah, I harbored a lot of sexual shame and guilt for losing my virginity to a guy that wasn't my husband, <laughs> number one. And to a guy that I just wasn't in love with. Had I been in love with him, I probably would have had less guilt. But it was just kind of like that whole, you know, like hit it and run kind of thing. Whatever they call it. Hit it and quit it kind of thing. Um, and it just really wasn't me, you know. Because I had waited so long to lose my virginity. And when I finally did, it was with a dude that just really didn't care about me. On my on one of my friend's couch and i just felt like that's just like it's just not me and i'm not proud of that you know and i made a video about it on this channel so watch that um and i just felt really guilty because of the whole christian thing and not waiting till marriage and i just you know i was like i need to have this connection with him and it wasn't only just christianity it was also just me and my own personal standards as a super you know high strong taurus uh, I just felt like I just had really high standards and expectations for sex that I didn't ever reach up to in the way that I wanted. Um, for example, like just having him take me out on a date before sex, I just kind of, I didn't realize that I was just selling myself short when it came to sex. So I felt really guilty for the fact that I didn't, I didn't demand more from these guys before I gave it up to them sexually. Um, and then I learned at age 24 that that guilt was just, it did nothing but hold me back you just have to accept that it happened forgive yourself forgive the guy just move on y'all both was young i was like 21 he was 21 like 20 years from now well he probably already forgot because that's how dudes be he probably don't even care but 20 years from now I'll just be like it happened and you just have to accept it but i really beat myself up so hard over that and i felt just like i just it just made me feel unworthy you know, and it brought my self-esteem down because I just felt like, why can't a guy just want to commit to me? Why why am I being used for sex? And I realized it was because of the way that I was um, treating myself, you know. So I, I learned that. And then once I had was in a relationship with my ex-boyfriend and we had sex, I realized that, like, it just really wasn't as serious as I made it. You know what I mean? Like, it, it is serious. Virginity is serious. But at the same time, it's not so serious that you should just beat yourself up about it for, like, three years straight. Like, it happened. You just have to get over it. So, yeah. Um, I believe that's everything I learned. Age 24 was... <sighs> you can just you could just tell by the side what age 24 was like for me. Like, And then a freaking pandemic happened. And I can't believe I'm about to turn 25. And I, I turned 24 and now I'm turning 25, both in the middle of a pandemic, meaning that it's been a whole year of this freaking BS. But yeah, age 24 was, it was a lot. Um, and I just, I just really want to change. I just want to change in life, man. I just, I really, I just hope that age 25, you know, and I'm not going to say hope I'm manifesting for age 25, that I finally move out and get my own place and that I have my own car. And that I'm finally just working on my career and doing the things that just bring me joy, you know. And that I'm just a happier person, you know. And just like, just freedom. I just, I felt really trapped at age 24. Like, that was very little freedom. So, I just, I just, praying and manifesting freedom for age 25.
okay i hope that you all enjoyed this video give this video a thumbs up and also share it with your friends if they like to be entertained by weirdo nerdy black girls um and subscribe to this channel duh and uh subscribe to my second channel called itty bitty black alien yeah it's my fashion diet the health fitness self-care i don't even know what to call that channel yeah but it's not like this channel okay yeah i love y'all bye bye <laughs>